Letter of Fire, directed by Dennis Botts, takes place against the background of the 16th century Reformation, when freedom of speech was under threat in Europe. Thanks in part to the rise of the printing press, this led to a dangerous struggle for power and significant political, religious, economic and social changes. For the first time, in the history of the Western world, it became possible for people to spread their ideas on a large scale. Twelve-year-old boy, Storm, played by Davy Gomez, gets caught up in an exciting adventure when his father takes on a dangerous new job. In secret, his father uses his printing business to print forbidden texts. These days it was very dangerous to have a different opinion. Storm's life is turned upside down when his father is caught red-handed when printing a forbidden pamphlet, written by Martin Luther in which he is challenging the Catholic Church. Martin Luther? What is that for a brief? It's a hell of a brief story. Come to our house. It's for both of Come to our house, Storm. He manages to get away just in time with the original letter, and becomes the focus of a manhunt. Where is the tinsel? Director of Photography, Ralph Deakins, explains how this film came to its visual decisions. Slit? Slit 104, take one, a marker only. Uh, yes, when making a period piece like this, uh, you're very dependent as a cinematographer on a very strong art department. And thankfully we had production designer Kurt Loyens build us a complete village where we could shoot 360 degrees. It was in an oval shape and when we wanted it to look even bigger, the visual effects department, led by Planet X Effects, extended the set digitally. Uh, we also spent a lot of time underground in a sewage system. And fortunately, it was also built uh, because the original location would be unfit for filming. We had hundreds of yards of tunnels, which were all curved to hide the lights and make it look it went on for thousands of feet uh, because it was built in a way you couldn't see the end. And a lot of walls could be removed to put cameras there if needed and lights. Some sets were also built a couple of feet above the ground, so we could make a transition as if the camera was traveling through the ground to show that our missing boy was very close to his mother uh, without the both of them knowing. Director Dennis Butts and I really like working with the elements, so we had water in the sewage system, but we also had a lot of rain scenes um, at night, and uh, we also used snow, it was natural snow, where we planned our schedule on, and we had a couple of scenes involving fire. Uh, filming at night with rain was a bit uncomfortable for our young talent, but I think they did an amazing job. Some of the locations were pretty big. For example, this cathedral, which had these very thick stained glass windows. So I had to put up a couple of 18,000 watt HMI lights just to make a difference. To emphasize our lead character being chased constantly, we also wanted to have a moving camera constantly. So we used the, the fly cam, we used steady cam, we used drones, we used the dolly, we used normal cranes, we used techno cranes, a lot of handheld and sometimes a little bit of shaky cam. For some night exterior scenes involving green screen, Planet X requested to shoot those scenes at the end of the day so the green screen didn't need to be lit and the spill from that screen would be less. A Storm Letter of Fire is sold to 66 countries all around the globe and is currently streamed in the Netherlands on the platform Videoland. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this feature film as much as uh, we did making it.